Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I greet you all this morning in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. Amen. Life isn't always good. I think we're old enough to know that. We've got our challenges. We've got our issues. We've got our problems. I mean, this world is not a nice place. For those of you who don't agree, just look at what we're sending our children out into and uh, the, the panic sometimes that we feel. The world is not good. We've got this guy, the devil, who's trying to sabotage everything that we do. We've got people, well, sometimes I take the devil over people. At least you know the devil where he's coming from. At least you know the devil, his angle is, I'm going to take you out. People, people are funny. Sometimes people smile, but they've got daggers in their heart. Uh, it's pointed. And sometimes when people say, well done, you know inside they're saying, you bloody swine. <laughs> How come you get to go there? And I, so uh, with all these challenges, with all these difficulties, with all these things that we have to face, there's one constant. There's one firm foundation. His name is Jesus. He is the firm foundation that God is good. And so today I greet you in that name. In his name we come together and we are brothers and sisters and we are excited to be in church today. As has become the habit over the past few weeks, I want to thank all those who worked so hard to get the church ready for service today. Uh, you look at everything. It's not necessarily that uh, everything is in good order. There's a lot of work that's happening in church during the week. We want to thank God that during the bad weather, there weren't any issues in church. I hope your homes are safe as well. In particular this week, I want to thank the music department. We've been having a few challenges with the technical side of things over the past few weeks. They met this week. They worked hard. They got everything sorted out. Will you just appreciate all those who work hard to get the church ready for service so that we can be here and just worship God as we do. Will you please turn with me to the gospel according to Mark? Mark chapter 11. Uh, we're going to read verse 12. And then uh, we will go to verse 22 and 23. Mark 11, verse 12, and then 22 and 23. If you're following with us in, your, in the NIV, the New International Version, it's uh, not going to be exactly the same because I'm reading from uh, one of the King James Versions, the King James Version translations. The Bible says, And on the morrow, that's not NIV speak, when they, this is Jesus and his disciples, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar of having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. Let's go to verse 22. Uh, well, let's go a bit before that. Let's go 11.21. And Peter calling to remember and said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered, answering said to them, Have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. For truly I say to you, that whoever shall say to this mountain, Be you removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he said. We thank God for the reading of his word this morning. Continuing from last week where we started talking about faith. You have to have faith. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. It, and sometimes we live lives where we think we can live a certain way and it pleases God, but it's not the religious activity. It's not ticking the register. It's not doing the right things that brings us into right standing with God. It's our faith walk with Him that pleases Him. The Bible says anything that is not done in faith is sin. And so this past week as I was driving, uh, we see many of them in our area, there, there was a robot that had been knocked over. And this robot on its side was still shining. It was still giving red when it had to give red. It was still giving amber when it had to give amber. It was still giving green when it had to give green. For those of you who don't know how robots work, green means go. Amber means go quickly. Red means put down and go. <laughs> that's, that's a South African way of, of understanding robots. But this robot was shining, but it was on its side. Which means, until I drove past it, I didn't even notice it, were, it, it was still working. That's how many Christians live their lives. They're sh doing the right things. But if you're not in the position that God put you, if you're not in the position that God called you to be in, if you're not positioned as the Word expects you to be positioned, uh, then it's a bit useless. 
Because if we say, let your light so shine, the Bible says, oh, nobody lights a candle and then puts it under a bowl. And so positioning is important. Your position, your heart attitude, your posture of your spirit man, of your soul, of who you are, it matters. And so we come to this story. And we look at the lesson that Jesus was teaching his disciples. And it is that if we speak to our mountains, Amen. I think we weep over our mountains. Yeah. I think we complain about our mountains. I think we fast and pray about our mountains. Not, the, not that these things are bad. I'm, I'm just giving you a list. I think we talk about our mountains. But the Bible says, if you want the mountain to be moved, you speak to it. Amen. And I think that when we look at that coupled with what Jesus did, it makes a whole lot of sense as to why so many of us still face our mountains. Because we've been taught all our lives that persecution is a part of the Christian walk. It is, uh, in a sense, but not, how, not, not to the extent that we've been taught. We've been told that suffering makes us better. And it does, but I'm not sure if it's in the way that we've been taught. Because people misquote the scripture and say suffering develops faith. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says suffering develops patience. Yes. And I understand patience and faith are, are very closely linked. But it does not say that suffering develops patience. Uh, faith, it says suffering develops patience. So we need to get this faith thing right. Because here's Jesus. Hungry. Jesus had a need. We have needs. We have problems. All of these can be encapsulated in that word. We have a need. Goals, hopes, dreams, it's a need. Jesus had a need. And there was something that should have met his need. There's a promotion you should have gotten. You know it. There's a job you should have gotten. You know you should have got the job, but somebody else, it got passed over. And what we say is, God knows what he is doing. Sure, I believe that with all my heart. But the devil knows what he is doing as well. Yes. And what we would say is, there's this mountain. Look at this beautiful mountain that God put here. God knows exactly why this mountain is here. I know that what I want is on the other side of this mountain, but let's just praise God for the, the Bible tells us some mountains need to be commanded to go and get out of my way. Amen. And so all the suffering that we go through, some of it is there to, is there to help our, develop our patience. But we have a very real statement here by Jesus saying, Sometimes you need to tell your problem where to get off. Amen. Not pray about it. Not counsel about it. Not complain about it. Not accept it as a child from God. But you need to say, mountain, get out of my way. Amen. Because I don't see how this God is being glorified in your poverty. And you might think that is such a harsh thing to say. But I love you. Amen. But the truth shall set you free. Yes. I can pet you. It's in my nature to tell you it's going to be okay and pet you. That's what I, that's what I like to do. But leaving you petted in your problem doesn't help you when I walk away. That's right. I don't see how you being sick forever and ever and ever is any testimony to Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals Amen. And I'm not here to condemn or criticize for people who are saying, but pastor, I'm sick for such a long time. Are you, uh, do you mean that I'm sinning or that I'm wrong? No, I'm saying that there's a word that we need to speak over sick people that says, by his stripes I am healed. Yeah. There's a word we need to speak over poverty that says, he is Jaira, my provider. And not do it the Babylonian way, which is, I depend on my doctor, I depend on my medicine, and as long as I take my meds, I will be okay. Do what you have to do, but I'm believing God for my healing. Amen. I'm not saying don't go and get a home loan. But I am asking you, go and find one scripture. Yes. Go and find one verse. Go and find one series of words that shows that God designed debt to uplift us. And I'll change what I'm saying. 
The Bible talks about death. It doesn't talk about death as a sin. I'm not saying you're sinning, but I'm saying there's a better way. And if we stop believing this, if we buy the Babylonian system, which is, can I afford the payments every month? And if that is all in our, that we have in our minds, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Why can't God give you cash to buy that house? Why can't he? Or do we trust a God who's just big enough to meet the monthly installment, but not big enough to pay it all? Can our God only afford 5,000 rand a month? Can our God, what, what do we think? We're going to break heaven. That God is, going, God is going to go broke. That God is not going to pay his light bill. My God can do exceeding abundantly more. This is a challenging sermon. I was telling somebody recently, this is not the sin sermons, not the ones where we, we're going for, for, for uh, things that are sad and sorrowful. These are the sermons that I feel pushed back on when I'm preaching these sermons, because these are the ones that can set us free. Amen. But something inside of us resists it. And as a congregation, I will get you there by, uh, by the grace that God gives me. Amen. But we need to be open to receive what God is saying. Yes. Because Jesus walks up to this fig tree. Here's why I took it from the King James Version, which is the most direct translation from the original language. The other versions are not bad. They are not wrong. They help us understand it better. I personally don't read the King James Version every day. But if you want to go back to what the original had to say, you need to go to, books, uh, to translations like King James Version and Amplified Version, and, and these will give you a better understanding of, of, of the original sense. L listen to the words. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. He saw the fig tree. Now the NIV would say Jesus said. But the King James Version says Jesus answered. Oh, yes. There's a difference. I'm saying things. You are not asking questions. If what I was saying was in response to something you said, then you can say I'm giving you an answer. But there's no question that you are asking. But the Bible says Jesus answered and cursed the fig tree. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think that's a bit weird, let me clear it up for you. Problems talk to us. If you don't believe me, somebody here right now is going to get a wake-up call when I say, I know you're distracted right now. <laughs> I know you're not concentrating right now. That's how problems talk to us. That we can be having a good day. And all of a sudden, your problem says, I'm still here. You can be having a wonderful day. You could be in church enjoying the presence of God, being uplifted by the word, but your problem is saying, you think it's going to work for you. I'm here to tell you that problems talk, and they talk a lot. Yes. Uh, okay, let me give you an example. I see you're not convinced. Let me try and convince you, because you're, you're looking at me like I'm lying. You're looking at me like I'm the only person who got voices talking to me. You all got voices talking to you. How many of you... And you're going to hear, I, I, God, I pray that we have evidence of the word becoming flesh here right now. I'm going to get you. How many of you had a cough last night? Cough. How many of you had a cough? Cough. cough. <laughs> it's starting. It's starting. As long as you don't think about it, you've got no cough. And how many of you put the sweet, put everything, rub the ginger, garlic, and everything? Huh? I'm hearing coughs in church today. Because once we start to focus on the problem, all it has to do, all it has to cough. Now some of you, not going to cough. Jesus. Or if you've got an ache or a pain, as long as you're laughing, as long as you're happy, you don't feel it. But let someone come and say, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Right now, condemnation is coming on this church. Because those of you who are looking at me like, I'm crazy, you're feeling the leg pain now? <laughs> feeling the knee is it? Back is good, so on neck, I know. All, all feeling it. Problems talk to us. Problems have a voice. You could be having a wonderful day, praising God, trusting Him in faith. That's when the news will come on. It looks like the rand is weakening again. And we listen to these voices. It's five months in a row that the petrol price has come down. One person, we all know this one person. They'll put it down by 10 cents, they'll pick it up by 50 cents. How many of you know, how many of you know that story? How many of you know that story? But dude, five months, 
Praise God for the five months. Can't we just be happy? Oh, we'll complain, complain about the economy. The rand is getting stronger. They don't tell us that. The interest rate came down. They don't tell us that. Yeah, but it went up uh, for 2%. We brought it down to 0.25%. Shut up. <laughs> Life is hard enough without you. And if we keep our mouths closed, we will not answer the problem and say, stop it. I rebuke you. Stop no more. I curse you because faith comes by hearing Romans Amen. and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Faith didn't come. It's not faith came. Faith comes. It's a continuous word. Yes. Which means if your hope of faith is coming to church on a Sunday and then you say, why is it that by Wednesday or by Thursday I'm feeling low again? It's because Sundays cannot keep feeding you. Yes. Faith comes today. And faith comes tomorrow and it keeps coming because faith comes by hearing. Yes. Not but faith came because we heard. Faith comes by hearing yes. the word of God. The word of God, the words that God says, godly words spoken over our situations. Because if I come and tell you, if you say, Pastor, I'm feeling so sick, and I come and tell you, Jesus wept. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with what you're going through. Or if you say, Pastor, my marriage is so bad, I don't know what to do, and I give you the scripture, it is good for a man not to marry. <laughs> it doesn't help. Or if you tell me, Pastor, life is so bad, I just don't know what to do. And if I show you, Judas hanged himself, and then I give you another uh, uh, verse that ran and say, now go and do likewise. <laughs> so you can't be random with these things. Yes. You have to have this word because faith, faith for what? Faith for what I'm going through today yes. Yes. comes. That's why it's not something that was given yesterday. By hearing, I don't know what you're going to go through tomorrow. This might be good for today. This might be good for what you're going to face two years from now. The words that God speaks over that situation. And it doesn't have to be spoken by me. Here's how we learn. All learning either happens through a teacher or a teaching medium, YouTube, a book, a teacher, or experience. This is my gripe with suffering. God will always send a teacher first. He will either put something in your spirit by his spirit. He will either give you some access to a book or to church. If you stay at home when you should have been in church, you missed the opportunity to be taught. Which then means you only have experience to teach you what God wants you to learn. In my observation, let's make a distinction. This is not Bible. This is my observation. Life goes a bit better. Life is easier when we learn from the teacher. Amen. Amen. And don't miss the lesson and then have to be taught by experience. Experience is where the suffering comes in. I think for everybody who's suffering here today, there was a moment where there was a voice that spoke and we could have learned to reach it this way. For everybody who's suffering with weight-related problems, there was a voice, I'm not having a go at you, if you're happy with your body, God bless you. I have no opinion on how you look. But there's a voice that I know I've spoken about it, or there's a doctor that told you that said, you need to eat healthier. You need to lose weight. Now you are looking and saying, oh God, for your grace to help me with this cholesterol or with this sugar problem or whatever it is. And good, it is good to have faith for God to heal you or for God to sustain you in this time. But you are going through that suffering in large part because you didn't learn when you were being taught. And when the pastor keeps saying, don't get into unnecessary debt, don't get into debt, work to get out of debt, but you don't listen to the voice and five years later you are suffering because you can't pay the, the interest on your debts, you are suffering, but as a consequence of not listening to the lesson, listening to the teacher. Which makes me ask the question, if I have a kettle, how many of you are so holy you don't know what a kettle is? <laughs> kettle. 
And if I put water in the kettle, I've got water in a kettle. And if I put the kettle on, <laughs> and there's no low jetty. <laughs> what do you see immediately? Nothing. But as an inevitable consequence of what I've done, the water will boil. Agreed? Or do I have to get the urn and give you a demo? <laughs> you may not see it now, but something is happening in the system that must have that result. The people, the voices that you are listening to today will have a result in your life. The space that you pour yourself into, think about your idiot friends. I, okay, you don't agree, to, what do you all talk about? Godly things? Ryan, Sam, and Levi get together and discuss godly things? <laughs> Idiot friends. His <laughs> father is okay. <laughs> Sorry, Auntie Mary. These wonderful parents, Idiot friend. I think, I think, I think it was Jerome who, who I heard, or, or Gian, or, or something told me that his dad says this. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Because the kettle will boil you. You must, it must, it must. You can't look at it and say, think about what I'm teaching you today. You cannot put yourself in that environment, see nothing happening, and then one day think, how did I get here? You got here because you poured the water into a boiling machine, switched it on, and watched it do its thing. Think about all the people you talk bad about your husband to. I'm making another guess here, idiot friends. Because I, just an observation. You know when you complain about your idiot husband? It's very rare that you're complaining to a godly person who's there to help you with your marriage. You know who we go and complain to? My husband is so like this, I can do better than that. My husband is worse. And then you all get together and you'll go find a third auntie, her husband is even worse. And then, but they all lie. But they all lie because we just got this thing, I'm better than I can, I can. You think your life is hard, we clear what I went through and we start making things up. And eventually, woman number four, after she got in that conversation, is going home and taking off with a poor, godly husband who's fasting and praying and just living a good life. Because of those rubbish friends. <laughs> because you boil to the temperature of what you pour yourself into. Amen. That's people. What are you watching on YouTube? What are you doing on your phone? On yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those voices are speaking to you. Amen. There's a Bible app on your phone. I know. I know you, you downloaded it because you're holy. I know. I know. <laughs> But you'll just scroll through it. You'll just scroll through it and you'll do all of these things. What is that voice telling you? What you watch on TV, the music you listen to, the church that you go to. I'm not here to condemn anybody or criticize anybody, but I do sometimes think that some pastors don't know what they are talking about. Because you can sit and listen for one hour. You know, have you ever been in a service? Did any of you think about me and this shirt? I curse you in the name of God. May fleas attack you tonight. Nits and lice and every, every play from Egypt. When you go, there to be frogs in your bed. How many of you have ever sat in a service for so long that you struggle to wake up when it's finished? <laughs> And you're there, and it's anointed, but, but, but it's so long that you need healing. <laughs> if only you could walk to the altar call. And at the end of it, someone says, hey, so what you thought about it? And you really don't know what was said, but they spoke for one hour. 
Anyone thinking about me? <laughs> I thought not. The voices matter. Yes. Because the Bible works both ways, not just the good way. And if the Bible says, if you speak and the mountain will move, it's the same person speaking a word, which means if all we do is speak negative words, it will work. Yes. It works. Yes. You can't just pick the nice parts of the Bible. Yeah. If I speak over my child, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Imagine if every parent in this church did this. May you lay hands on your child. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord smile on you and give you peace. May the threefold blessing of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, be your portion both this day and forevermore. Amen. That will work. But when we say, hey, you're rubbish like your father, go and leave me alone. You're worrying me the whole day. Stupid, stupid brains like, it works. It works. Imagine if wives blessed their husbands as they left home. Imagine if husbands blessed their wives with the words that we speak. Because whoever said sticks and stones will break my bones, words won't hurt me. They, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Hit me with a stick, throw a stone at me, I'll get better. Words hurt like yes. crazy. Yes. Jesus answered the problem. Because the problem said something to him. What is your problem saying to you? Not good enough. I'm gonna die alone. Not enough money. Not enough education. Gonna be sick. It's getting on, it's getting on, it's getting on. And we are sitting there with our mouths closed. We are sitting there saying, woe is me. When we should be standing up and saying, thus saith the Lord my God. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't want to say thus. This is what we learned in church. This is what the Bible says. I will be blessed in the city. I will be blessed in the field. I will be blessed coming in. I'll be blessed going out. My economy does not work from here. My economy is from there. I don't care. The doctor says I've got two months to live. Your word says I will live and I will not die. I believe that my God can do all things. I believe my God can do exceeding abundantly more. I believe my God is true to his word. Why don't we talk to our mountains like that? It's a better word. It's a better word. Yes. It's a better word. Yes. What would you think if you saw two people and one person was just shouting and swearing and screaming the other person and the other person just stood like this and took it? You would feel sorry for the person catching it. You would pity them. You would wish they had a spine. You would wish they had a backbone. You would wish they do something. Just punch the guy in his face. Do something. Just don't be that <coughs> pathetic. Yeah. That's how Christians posture themselves. Yeah. Everything is shouting and screaming and we just standing like this, taking it, taking it, taking it. Don't you know that you are a child of the yeah. living yeah. God? Yeah. Yeah. That what you think is on top of you, he put under your feet. Yes. And it's just a roaring lion prowling outside. The lion of Judah who's got a bite is inside of you. Amen. And so it's time, church. It's time we stood up tall and said, I, 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 I'm not dealing with this anymore. Yes. I'm not accepting this anymore. Yes. It doesn't make it easy. But the victory is guaranteed. Amen. Amen. I don't want to lie to you. It's not, there's your problem. And one day you say, in Jesus' name, and poof, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Bible calls faith a fight. Yes. The good fight yes. of faith. Yes. And so I'm on this thing, I've been talking about it recently, where I just don't want to take medication for an allergy forever. Mm -hmm. And so I'm being honest with you. Now when I sneeze, I don't say excuse me, because excuse you for what? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'll, I'll, I'll sneeze in your face. I... <laughs> No, I should say, excuse me, don't, don't talk to me. But I, I say, when I see, I say, by your stripes, I am healed. Yeah. And you ask my wife, I can't lie if she's sitting here. She'll, you know, she'll say from there, he's a liar. 
by your stripes I am healed by your stripes. And every morning and every night, I feel like how I used to feel when I needed to take a tablet. And I come this close. I'm on my way to go and take it. It's, it, it's easier to give in. It's easier to take the medication. But I say, by your stripes, I am healed. By your stripes, I am healed. I'm one month clean. Yeah. If I was in the Alcoholics Anonymous, they'll start giving me uh, anniversaries. <laughs> because I'm free. I'm free. It's a silly example. I know you all have bigger problems than allergies. But it's, I'm saying, I know it's not easy, but you, you have to keep at it. Yes. And every morning you have to get up and you have to fight. Yes. And you have to speak the words. And you have, to, you have to stand in faith. And you have to not do the easy thing and do the difficult thing because that will be, end in defeat and this will end in victory. Amen. And you need to cut out the voices that say, do this. Yeah. And you need to put in the voices that say, do this. And for all of us here today, we should go home and audit our teachers, the voices that are speaking to us. We need to go home and audit what we say to others because we are their voices in their lives. Yes. And we need to clean up our words and stop gossiping and stop cursing and stop putting people down because God has put better words, the power of life and death in our tongues. Amen. And if I'm going to speak into your bad situation, let me be a life speaker into it. Not, and I can be telling the truth. You are down to the human. You know, the Bible says you're going to burn in hell. Or I can say, Jesus still loves you. Amen. And Jesus still has a plan for you. Amen. And he died for you. And people won't uh, let you get over it, but God has forgiven you the moment you repent. i rather speak these words into people's yes. lives. Yes. And so for everybody here today, there's Babylon, there's Christ. There's problems, and there's faith. And there's mountains, and there's a mountain-moving God. Yes. And the whole world says, nothing can be done about this. But my Bible says all of this. And so we have to choose today whom we will serve. Yes. Because no man can serve two masters. Yes. And I can't come in church and say, holy are you, Lord, and be encouraged and say all my loudest amens and go in the world and be this. No, I choose Jesus. Amen. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. In my sickness, I choose Jesus. Amen. In my lack, I choose Jesus. Amen. In my troubled home, I choose Jesus. Amen. In my troubled workplace, I choose him still. Amen. On my deathbed, I choose Amen. Jesus. Amen. Because he is the way. Yes. He Amen. is the truth. Yeah. He is the light. This got no victory for me. Yes. This got no defeat. Only bow your heads in prayer.